Well, under the Kaya Bridge in Ogun State, part of the popular Ogun River seems to have dried up almost overnight. The dry section of the river, now seemingly a landmass of its own, is situated around the famous Kara cattle and ram market. The situation has locals quite confused and also concerned. Let's take a look. This land covered in greens used to be a flowing river, just like the other side of it. Ogun River, as it is popularly called, serves as a source of water for residents in the area and traders in this cattle market. It also helps provide some revenue for water transporters who once plied their trade here. But now, the water course is obstructed by weeds and residents are surprised by such strange phenomenon. We discover that the water is not flowing anymore. We say, ah, what is all this? Everybody coming to see that, oh, can, can we trek on this? But we try to see that it's trackable, that people can walk on it. We started jumping that, oh, this thing is not going down. What is happening? We think that it's the only this place. Then when we go to the distance, we discover that it's everywhere that is dry. And we don't know what really caused it. We ply this road every day. Even my baby is always shouting, mommy, mommy, look at the big river. I grew up in this area and I've known this river to be here over 30, 35 years ago. And it's so surprising to see that everything has just changed all of a sudden. Experts, however, have some explanation about the occurrence. Under the Kara Bridge, it's a lot of human activities. You have cattle rearers, you have a lot of sheep and all that, and a lot of other human activities there. And all the domestic waste, all the waste from the cow, that's the cow dung, they are all held into the stream. And the stream naturally brings sediments. So sediments plus the waste will be equal to a heap in the stream. And that is a fertile ground for water hyacinths. Water hyacinths are in freshwater environments and they are flushed from the uplands to the lower lands to the ocean. But because the ocean is a marine environment, they do not thrive very well. The Ogwashun Dam was, um, you know, released and um, because it has um, increased the water level and then um, there's torrents, you know, on the river course, so it has brought along with it um, a lot of um, hyacinths that you can see at the background. Uh, what is um, uh, mysterious about the whole thing is that the clogging, particularly under the bridge, that's why you think the other side is dried up and this place is, uh, you know, uh, still uh, flowing. You know, basically what happened is that the river, um, the hyacinth was, you know, brought along with the torrent of the water and then that clogged the river course. Ogun River has become some sort of tourist attraction now. The authorities are warning residents to keep off the river while waiting for results of findings to determine what actually happened. Well, let's get some more analysis now of the ecological situation at Ogun River. And joining us for that is Professor Obinna Chukwu. He is a professor of marine biology and ecosystem at the University of Lagos. Professor Chukwu, thank you very much for joining us in Africa 54. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you very much. And how often do we see situations like what's happening with the river, the Kara River in Ogun State? Thank you. Well, I will start by saying that uh, it is not really as miraculous as we uh, people tended to portray that. What happened at uh, the Kara end of the Ogun River is a situation that has been uh, ongoing for quite some time. Okay. Now, you know, Ogun River takes its course from somewhere in our your state. Mm -hmm. Uh, it flows down through Ogun State and then empties into the Lagos Lagoon. And as the river flows, it slows down as it's getting towards the estuary. Now, Cynthia, you take a look at Kara and see all the activities that have been going on there. You have the cow dung, you have the, the hooves of the cattle and all manner of uh, uh, intensive activities going on there, all these result to what you call enrichment of the nutrients. 
And this new trend that has been enriched there is food for what you call the aquatic macrophyte, uh, which is uh, the water hyacinth, or in its biological name, we call it a conia crassipis. Now, what happened is that gradually siltation and sedimentation of the Ogun River has been taking place over the years. And you know, as the river comes down to the estuary entering the Lagos Lagoon around there, around that Karamaket area, it forms more like a, a kind of bow, a bend. And when you have such situations occurring in a, a riverbed, you have some portions now being shallow, while the other portion becomes uh, a little deeper. Gradually, this sedimentation and all the activities that have been uh, going on there has been taking place over the years. But then what led to that kind of sudden emergence of uh, water hyacinth? You will also know that the water hyacinth has also been uh, growing around those areas, and the water ha body has actually been narrowed around there. But three days or thereabout before we had a heavy rainstorm, we also had the release of uh, water from the, uh, what we call the Ikere Gorge Dam upstream. Yes. And that water was released with the intensity of the rains we have had and the release of that water, that changed the hydrodynamics of the river. Okay. The velocity increased, and then what happens? All the dense mass of water hyacinths that you had now flowed down. Well, Professor, I, based on all the, the terminologies you're using right now, we can go on for a really long time. But the, at the end of the day, what, what can be done, you know, to prevent situations like this? Because it's got people really concerned. And if it could happen with one um, waterway, it could happen with another, definitely. Oh, sure. We have had instances where this has happened in the so past. So does, does it ever go back to what, what it used to be? Oh, sure. It will definitely go back. I mean, those are just dense mass okay. of aquatic macrophytes that are stashed together. And then with the mud you have there, it has now stuck together. But, it but don't forget okay. that the water will still find its level. It's still moving on underneath. And gradually, even if we don't remove it mechanically, over time, those dense mass will decay mm -hmm. and then uh, get into the water beds and everything will be flushed out. So basically, out those who are concerned really have nothing to worry about. You don't have anything to worry about. Or rather, we are worried that people are even walking into the, those dense mass yes. and they're exposing themselves to all forms of danger. Well, Professor, we're going to have you again on Africa 54 if you'll be our guest, but for now, we're very grateful for your time. Thank you very much. You. It's time for us to take another break, but before we go, a reminder to visit our website, channelstv.com, for all the latest information day or night. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channels web. Still to come on Africa 54. The African diaspora will meet a restaurant owner in Washington doing his part to spread the cuisine of the continent. That's after the break.